What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna go through the very basics of how to dial in a guitar tone. So if you have no idea whatsoever or what you're doing when you're trying to come up with your own tones, this video is for you. Although if you already know how amps work, um, if you're already pretty familiar with the basics, you might want to skip this one because we're gonna really go in depth into really the, the fundamentals of building a guitar tone. So we're gonna take a look at how every control works, effect routing, pedals, cabinet section, and I'm gonna to try to give you a systematic way of coming up with the perfect guitar tone all the time. Let's get into it. Okay, so today we're gonna to use the Archetype Plane by Neural DSP because I don't have an amp at the moment. Also because this is actually a great plugin and it kind of works like an amp, so we can uh, use this as a reference. But obviously whatever you have at your disposal is gonna work, so don't worry too much about that. So we're gonna try to dial in generic, versatile rhythm guitar tone, uh, distorted rhythm guitar, which could work for, I guess, rock and metal. So let's, let's get started. First of all, how does an amp work? So I'm gonna give you a very general and um, simplistic description. So you have a preamp, which is gonna amplify your guitar signal. And then you have a power amp, which basically is gonna turn that signal up uh, with volume. And then you have the cabinet, um, the, eventually the mic, if you're recording, obviously. So let's take uh, a quick look at the controls of an amp. So in this case, we have gain, bass, mid, treble, master, volume, and presence. And this is usually what you have, uh, you know, an average on, uh, on your amp. So the gain is, uh, as I was saying that before, the preamp section. So this is gonna control the volume going into the preamp. And it is what uh, gives you distortion. So gain basically means volume. So uh, you're basically adding volume before the the, the preamp section, so this is gonna uh, make the sound distort, uh, saturate. Then we have bass, which is obviously the amount of bass frequencies, and uh, so with mids and treble. And then we have the master volume, which is the volume of the power amp, so it's not gonna change the color that much. It's gonna change the color, it, it usually adds some uh, compression or saturation if you have a tube power amp, obviously. And also some plugins uh, do emulate that, not this one I think, this one is, is just volume as far as I know, but like the 14 Kali or other Neural DSP plugins have a really convincing master volume control and you can actually get incredible results like a real um, tube amp. And then the presence knob which is basically controls like around the high mids area so uh, it's gonna uh, it's gonna give obviously presence to to your tone. Then in this case we have a bright switch, which makes the sound brighter. But again, every amp is different. This is uh, you know the the general controls that you have. So let me make sure everything is disabled. And um, let's start dialing in the tone. So this is the tone that we have with everything at noon. And I always recommend to start at this point. So put everything at noon on your amp. Um, if it's a good amp or a good plugin, it's gonna sound good, like in this case, even with everything at noon. It is already a nice guitar tone. Obviously we want to bring this to a more saturated uh, sound, a bit more heavy maybe. So the first thing to do I'd say is uh, turning the gain knob up a little bit. Let's let's see what happens. More gain, obviously. So the um, important thing is how do you know how much gain to use? And I see so many people get this wrong. Usually you need way less gain than you, you're actually using. So if you're using too much gain, you're losing clarity and you, you're losing definition in your sound. If you use too little gain, obviously, the sound is gonna be weak and you know it doesn't really uh, work maybe if you're playing heavy music. So try to get the sweet spot in which you have 
uh, a heavy tone, uh, so heavy distortion, but it doesn't sound like a, com a complete mess of distortion. So you can hear the notes, the clarity, um, obviously what pickups you have is going to determine uh, the amount of gain you need, so it depends uh, on the guitar too. But anyway, try to get the sweet spot which you have a nice distorted sound that it doesn't sound like a mess, which is pretty difficult actually. So in this case, this could be a nice crunch tone, but if for instance I, I'd have to play like uh, a more chuggy riff, doesn't really work, sounds like a CDC. <laughs> in this case we, we don't want that. So I'm gonna turn this gain knob up a bit. And obviously this is a crunch amp, so, so we're gonna need to turn this gain knob up a lot, but obviously if you're using a more distorted uh, amp from the beginning, you're gonna uh, you're gonna have more gain at your disposal, so you're gonna use less of it. But anyway, okay, so it's starting to saturate on the palm mutes, um, and that could be an, a good reference for you to determine how much gain you're using. So let's see with the gain all the way up. Okay, so at this point, the palm muting are uh, starting to saturate. So and the sound is still clear. It's actually not that much gain, even if the knob is all the way up. So you can hear the tone. The tone is clear. And we also have a nice distortion for um, the palm muting. So this this it is actually a good point with this amp. And um, so don't worry too much about the the position of, of the knobs. Just use use your ear always. So at this point, the EQ is very flat. What I will do is try to noodle around with the EQ section to get a more aggressive tone. So we can try to add more bass. So this is beefing up the sound a little bit. Um, be careful with the bass, especially if you have a, a, a riff with palm muting, because if you add too much bass, the palm muting is going to be too messy. This sounds good, but it could not work in a mix, so be careful with that. Here it sounds pretty good actually, maybe a bit less. But also I want to scoop uh, the mids a little bit, um, again to have some more aggression. And also be careful with the mids because if you uh, cut too much mids from your tone, you're gonna lose all the presence. So the mids are, are, are the frequencies that are gonna determine the presence of your tone, since the guitar is basically mid-range uh, based instrument, so the mids are very important. Make sure you get the mids right. This sounds pretty good. So in case you, uh, for instance, you find yourself having too much mids, it sounds good, um, but your mid, um, but for rhythm guitar. This is probably too much out of the, you know, out of the mix. Too much mid-range. Uh, it kind of gets in the way and it sounds a bit less aggressive. So uh, this is what would happen if you if you'd have too much mids. Uh, so around here was sounding pretty pretty cool. Also, we have the treble and the presence knob to refine the presence of the guitar a bit more. So let's try to brighten up the sound a bit with the treble knob. Uh, 
obviously, if you exaggerate with the treble, uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have a brittle sound. Um, gonna sound harsh, and you don't want that. You see, and also try to not. Uh, spend too much time tweaking the EQ because if you spend even two minutes, two or three minutes with the treble knob at this position, then your ears uh, are not going to notice the difference anymore because uh, your ears actually adapt to the sound you're hearing. So even if the tone is harsh, you you might not uh, you might not notice that if you uh, you know if your ears are used to that why you took the tone. So try to be quick and use your instinct, I guess, to get your tone fast. And so you don't get the chance for your ears to adapt to the tone. So this is sounding very bright for me. Maybe around here. Still a bit bright. This sounds good. Then it's still a nice amount of high end. But it's actually pretty balanced at this point. Sounding pretty nice already. So maybe we can control the harshness a little bit with the presence knob. So I'm gonna turn that down a bit. Much better. So the presence basically controls the high end, like pretty much like the treble knob, but it uh, in a different frequency area. So uh, you you might want to experiment with that. Um, listen to the harshness and uh, the presence of the sound and try to find the right balance. For instance, if I would turn the knob up, the sound is very present and it's going to be very present in the mix, but it, it's sounding a bit harsh at this point. And actually, a cool technique you could do that is very uh, used is dialing back the treble knob and then dialing uh, and then turning up the presence knob a bit more so you have a very present sound without the harshness it is sounding pretty good actually um, it's more focused on the high mid area instead of like the really uh, the high end the high end like 8k like this is more focused towards the like 4k to 5k area and um, so uh, this is gonna cut through the mix and it's not gonna sound harsh but it doesn't have uh, you know the definition you would have if you would turn the, the treble knob up and the presence down like we were playing before so like this <laughs> Is more, I think, extended, uh, like spectrum wise. Uh, you have the, the very high end and uh, a balanced high mid area. Um, while if you do the other way, whilst if you do the other way around, it's, it's, I think it's a bit more mid rangey. So, anyway, let's, let's say we like this tone. <laughs> Sounding pretty nice. So uh, the thing that I'm noticing here is that we could get a bit more clarity, especially with the uh, news. It sounds a bit messy and out of out, out of control. So the the most common technique in rock and metal uh, tone making is using an overdrive or a boost pedal in front of the preamp section. So guitar going into the overdrive or a boost or an EQ pedal um, 
and then going into the preamp again. So before the gain, the the gain knob here on the um, on the on the preamp. So this is done for two reasons. Well, obviously you you have a bit more gain at your disposal, so you can have uh, you know more gain and that the sound is gonna be a bit heavier. But also overdrive pedals tend to uh, tighten the low end a lot. So the palm mutes are going to sound tighter, the sound is going to be a bit more present in the mid-range, and you you get, in general, a bit more clarity. And that's why 99% of the time, if you're dialing it a rhythm guitar tone, you're going to use uh, a pedal in front of the amp. Not always, it, it depends on also on your taste. You don't have to use it, it's, it's not a rule. But anyway, so uh, here in the uh, in the pedal section, which is routed before the preamp section in this plugin, obviously if you have analog gear, you're gonna route that yourself. Uh, so you always want your dynamics before the amp. So compression, overdrive, uh, if you're using a wah pedal or an EQ pedal, uh, you want to have that um, before the amp usually. So in this case, we have a compressor which we're not really going to use, I think, now. Uh, but we're going to use the overdrive. Um, not really to add more gain, but just to tighten up the sound a bit. So the way you usually do, do that is by turning the drive knob all the way down and then boosting the, the level, which, remember, is, is going into the preamp, so the more you you turn this knob the, the the volume knob up the more you're gonna add gain before the preamp section so this is gonna basically consider this as uh, a second gain knob like this one since it's basically volume uh, before the preamp section so it's gonna saturate it's gonna add distortion and um, the concept here that I'm trying to explain is that you the volume the position of the gain the volume is going to dictate if you uh, saturate or not the signal so if you turn up the volume or the gain before something then you're boosting the signal into that thing so if uh, that thing is a preamp so a guitar amp like in this case it's going to add distortion because uh, preamps and guitar amps have a certain threshold. If you go uh, uh, above that, basically uh, the sound, the signal is distorted because you don't have the headroom to reproduce that signal, so uh, it sounds like distortion. This is uh, a general rule. So if you like turn the volume into your speakers uh, too loud, then the speakers are gonna saturate gonna distort um, that's why for instance if you have crappy speakers like a crappy car system and you turn up the volume too loud basically the sound is distorted it's, it's the same concept but anyway back to the uh, guitar tone so this is usually um, the the settings for a, for an overdrive pedal which you're gonna use to tighten the sound so uh, also you have obviously the tone knob which you can use to, to brighten the sound a bit maybe if you need or obviously to darken it uh, but anyway so you see already we are introducing a lot of distortion so I'm gonna try to uh, balance this level knob here as you can hear, the palm mutes now are uh, a lot more uh, clear. For instance, if I turn off the overdrive, listen to how muddy it, it gets. When, and then when I turn it on, it's focused and clear. So at this point, I might want to go back to this gain knob here, maybe dial it back a bit so I can uh, have more control here. So maybe I can boost it from here. Uh, 
And also let's try to experiment with the drive knob to maybe add some more drive because I'm uh, uh, since the sound is tighter we we lose some heaviness I guess it, it's sounding more tight most more dry yeah so with, with the drive knob we can introduce some more distortion <laughs> Um, you see how even on the seventh string, the palm mutings are sounding very clear. Whilst if I would turn off the overdrive, it's just mad, especially if you have a seventh string. So make sure you're going through an overdrive or even an EQ pedal with like the low end uh, turned down. So if you have like a parametric EQ or something. <laughs> Now we have a tight rhythm guitar tone. Uh, we, we could maybe dial back the tone knob a bit to prevent harshness again. I'm pretty satisfied at this point, to be honest. So it's it's actually very simple. Just a few moves on the preamp section, and then you tighten up the signal with an overdrive. You can even start with, with, with the overdrive turned on if you want. I like to dial uh, the amp first and then uh, dial the overdrive, and then maybe uh, go back to the amp to tweak, tweak it a bit. So about the compression, I don't really use compression before the overdrive and before the preamp in a rhythm distorted tone. Uh, this is just personal taste, of course you can try that and see if you like it. Uh, so really what compression does if you use it before the gain stage uh, is gonna uh, compress and limit the dynamics of your playing before the distortion, so the distortion is gonna react less in less dynamic way. Um, but also it's going to level your playing, so you, you're going to sound more consistent. Um, the palm mutes sound, uh, will sound more consistent, so it's definitely good for some applications. But again, just my for my taste, I don't really use it in front of the amp. Um, but anyway, at this point, uh, if you have um, the chance of using an EQ post-amp, so the signal is uh, going into the pedal, then into the preamp and power amp of the of the amp, and then you have the chance of having an EQ. This, I believe, even post cabinet. I'm not sure about this. It could be before the cabinet or post cabinet section. But anyway, uh, if you have a post EQ section, you can then get more precise into what frequencies dialing in. So for instance, these controls are very precise. So you can shape the sound completely with one of these. And this is, this works like an EQ. So you have your uh, the low end uh, on the left going up to the high end. If, you ever, if you've ever seen uh, a graphic EQ, you know what I'm talking about. If not, um, I'd say you don't really have to know this. If you have no idea what this is, it's okay to just leave it as it is. To be honest, I don't really EQ my guitar tones that much. The thing you could do is get getting rid of the extreme low end, so like 60, 65 and 16K. So this way your tone is gonna be more, I guess, mix ready and more focused on the mid range, which is the space that guitars have pretty much in a mix.
it's a subtle difference, but it helps uh, in a mix, especially in a mix context, to you know make the guitar sit better into the mix. So the thing that I'm hearing, to be honest, is a bit m too much mid range and like boxiness in the tone. So that is usually the the mid area from uh, 500 to 1k, pretty much. Sometimes to 250. So the low low mids to mids. Um, for instance, if I boost this mid area, this is the frequency that I'm talking about. You know, this very nasal and boxy frequency, which is also present a bit here on the on 1k. So this is the range that I'm talking about. So I would go for something like this. So again, this EQ is very powerful. So even one or two dBs are gonna make a huge difference. Well, maybe not huge, but a difference. So now the tone is uh, it's a bit more scooped, but uh, a bit heavier and a, a bit more defined. It doesn't sound boxy anymore. Actually, pretty like how it sounds like. Um, so, as a result of this, I'm noticing a bit too much harshness here on the 4K, 8K area. You see this very harsh frequency zone. So, I'm gonna dial this back a bit. So, even uh, 0.4, so half a dB down is going to make a difference. Also, I'm hearing the palm mutes a bit too much, poking out a bit too much. So, the palm mutes are going to be usually in the low mid area, so 250, sometimes one, uh, 100 hertz, especially if you have a 7 string. In this case, I'm going to dial this back a bit. Much better. Let's try without EQ. And then with EQ. So it's very subtle, especially if you don't have a trained ear or like mixing. So this could be looked at as more of a mixing thing. Anyway, let's move on to the cabinet section. Now, obviously, the cabinet that you're using is going to determine, uh, is going to impact the sound, probably in the heaviest way of everything we talked about so far. So, um, pay much attention to which uh, cabinet uh, you're using, or like if you're using IRs, make sure you have really good one. Uh, in this case, we we don't have the chance to decide which cabinet to use. We do have the option of choosing between different mics and also obviously loading your custom IRs. But anyway, you just have to experiment with that and see what you, you like, basically. Um, and also, let's talk about briefly the, the miking section. So, again, the way you mic an amp, obviously, is going to determine it. It's going to make a huge difference in the tone. So, this is more of an engineering uh, thing. So, as a guitar player, you don't really have to know this, but obviously, you know, this day, everyone need, kind of needs to be also an engineer, a producer in some way, because, you know, you have to know how to make your own demos, uh, how to make them sound good. So let's talk a bit about that. So the position of the mic and the distance from the cone is going to dictate the final tone, obviously. The closer the mic is, the more a presence and the more mid-range, uh, in general, presence you're gonna have, and the the more you're focusing uh, towards the center of the cone, again, the more presence and the more top end and mid-range you're gonna have, and vice versa. If you are uh, far from the mic or like distant from the center of the cone, the sound is, is is usually a bit smoother and with less presence. So let's try to experiment with that. If I move this mic all the way to the right, so pretty far from the center. 
you see that we, we lose some definition and some top end and some mid range. It sounds more far away. Whilst if I put this right on the center, the high mids are back and now the sound is more present. Obviously you might want to find a sweet spot. Usually um, the you know one of the most common mic positions is uh, at this point uh, in between the, the center of the mic and like the what's it called? So between the cone and the dust cup. And then again with the distance, if for instance I turn the mic far from the speaker. I mean, even with the distance all the way up, it's not really that far, so... But you, you can hear how the mid-range is uh, lowering a bit. Whilst if I put this close to the, to the cone... Also the low end and low mids. Well, obviously, in the real world, uh, mics are gonna act in a different way, and... Um, you just have to experiment with that, basically. Tone is a never-ending quest, I think. Or you do like me, and you just don't care, and at that point you're done. Just kidding. To be honest, I don't really spend that much time tweaking my tones. So I'd say let's let's put it... I don't know, it sounds good. Let's put it like here. Sounds pretty good. Now this was uh, uh, an SM57, which is a very mid-range and present mic, so very focused on the high mids. Then you have obviously different different mic choices. So we're not going through all of this because this video, I'm sure it's already so long. But anyway, just experiment and see what you like. In general, dynamic mics sound very uh, mid-rangey and they have uh, a good amount of presence. Condenser mic usually are more broad in the spectrum, so uh, very uh, detailed low end and high end. And then ribbon mics are very smooth in the top end. So, for instance, uh, it's very common to combine the, combine a ribbon mic with a with a dy dynamic mic. So you have the the presence and the high mid bite from, for instance, the fifty seven and then you combine it with the ribbon mic, which is smoother in, in the top end, so you get um, you smoothen the sound a bit, you, you get some more warmth, um, you get, you know, a nice balance. Anyway, um, at this point you would just need to add some ambience to the tone. Now, with rhythm patches, obviously you don't want to get crazy with reverb and delay, even without it, to be honest. <laughs> Sounds pretty okay, and then maybe in mix you can add some like a re a early refraction, like some room reverbs, or you can do it right here. So let's dial in. Let's dial in a very short reverb. Not short at all. Yeah, I think this reverb is not capable of doing the like the room tone. For instance, if I open up just to show you, um, this plugin here, or really any type of room reverb. So there's a very nice pre presets. So this is like, you know, a, a room preset. So it sounds basically like a room. So very short and very you know, with a lot of early refractions instead of, uh, you know, the tail of the river. And so, in case you don't know, early refractions are the one, the ones that, like, bounce off the walls. Um, so they're very useful to create a space for your guitar. Because obviously when you mic the, the amp, um, you're not really hearing the space around, you know, the, the, the air that is moving around the, the speaker. So you need to add that in, in the mixing uh, stage. So something like that could work. Maybe let's make it a bit darker, a bit more short. 
and let's put it like here. So now it sounds like it is actually in a room, so it's like real now. Whilst if I turn this off, it sounds like you have headphones on, like you're literally with your ear next to the speaker. So you always want some room uh, reflections um, while you're mixing or while you're playing, say, with headphones or, you know, in, in those cases. And this could actually be another reason why your guitars are not blending in uh, in the mix. Uh, because they don't have reverb, so if they don't have a space, your ear is gonna, you know, act weird about it because you always, you always hear reverb in real life. So if you have a close mic sound with no reverb, no reflection, it's gonna be it's gonna be really weird to your ears, and so you're gonna differ differentiate um, that thing that doesn't have reflections from the rest. So basically you're gonna hear the guitars and then the other instruments and not one thing as you should in a mix so yeah that's about reverb which is a complicated subject um again it's more of a mixing thing now obviously if you add uh, a long delay to this tone you could get i think a nice lead tone <laughs> So most of the time, the only difference between my rhythm tones and my lead tones is just delay at the end of it. Um, most of the time it can work. Yeah, I'd say I, I've talked enough for one video, this is going to be so long, but I think it's important that you have all the information you need in just one video. Um, especially if you're a beginner, you know, a lot of people ask me about this kind of stuff, like how to make a guitar tone from scratch, because you, you can't really find, I think, this type of information uh, in videos on YouTube, because they're like very basic, you're supposed to know this, but if no one ever told you, uh, how would you, how would you know, uh, how would you know this? So hopefully this is going to be helpful for some of you. Hopefully you're still here watching me. I don't think so, to be honest. So if you made it this far through the video, I should make you comment something really stupid like macaroni. You know what macaroni is? Probably you know. So so make sure to write macaroni in the, in the comment section so I know that you watched the whole video. And let's see how much of you there would be at the end of it. But anyway, guys, uh, I think that's it for today. Again, hopefully you, you enjoyed it. Hopefully it's going to be of some help to someone. Um, yeah, I'll just see you in the next video. Ciao.